Good day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the show. Glad to have you guys here on this Monday, September 2nd, 2024. Thank you for tuning in. You know what? I did a show yesterday for my members about a very serious issue. Uh, I did another show this morning on that same issue, and I'm going to post it on Patreon. And uh, now I'm going to do a, a show, and uh, I'm talking. I'm still talking about a similar issue. And you say, well, what's the issue? The issue is the war in Ukraine is getting really intensifying, getting really hot. It's spreading more now in, kind of into Russia as well. Uh, and also Russians are hitting back and hitting back really hard in Ukraine. And not only that, we got the Houthis lighting oil tankers on fire, massive oil tankers on fire that could cause an environmental disaster that's absolutely off the charts. Uh, I can't help but think how all the, the, a lot of environmentalists they talk about the uh, carbon carbon emissions and everything else. But what about millions of gallons of oil floating around in the ocean? What's that going to do? You know, it's it's one thing uh, to what's the old saying to strain in a gnat and swallow a camel. That's the old saying, you know? Anyway, let's take a look at this. An oil tankers and merchant ships are hit by projectiles. Another tanker is burning, risking the worst oil spills this century. And so we're going to see where the oil spills are going to be. And basically, I guess, uh, if we take a look at the Red Sea, these are going to be the worst affected areas right in here. Near the opening of the mouth of the red of this of this of the Red Sea, uh, my lands, it's going to spill on both sides, both shores. It looks like it's going to cover both shores, mostly the shore toward Saudi Arabia. Their beaches down there will all be oily and tarry. Worst tanker spill of the century. Now Russia is saying that, now, like I say, the attack, they're taking it to Russia. Very concerned about this. Uh, well, I'm concerned for Ukraine, too. I mean, it's, it's, both sides are getting hit and hit hard right now, and this war has really escalated ever since uh, Ukraine invaded Kursk. It says Russia says it down to 150 drones in one of the biggest Ukrainian drone attacks of the war. Russian air defenses, it says, intercepted and destroyed 158 drones overnight. What about the ones uh, that they didn't down? Uh, it's saying which regions they were shot down in here. Uh, deep inside Russia, they're shooting these drones down. Uh, how many are hitting? I'm not sure. It doesn't say how many hits. It says how many they downed. It says they downed 158. And uh, obviously, look at the smoke coming up. Obviously, they're hitting something. Honest to gosh. Now, Russia is also striking back. and It says Russia rocks Kiev with missiles, drones, and broad bombardment of Ukraine's military. Uh, you know, just rubble. You know, uh, so the Ukrainians are, are are moving into Russia, and the Russians are moving into Ukraine. I mean, I'm just sick of all this. I'm like, why don't they just stay home? <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> like, they had it good before this war started. And now, what are they doing is... is uh, Russians belong in Russia, and Ukrainians belong in Ukraine. But that's not the way it is right now. We got Russians in Ukraine. And we got Ukrainians in Russia. That's backwards. They're not in their own place. And this all started with Russia invading Ukraine. Let's not forget who, who where it started. Shall we? You know? it's And, and I just see it all as nonsense. 
A lot of people are dying in this nonsense, you know, and it, 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 I'll be glad when it's over. But, but it's really, really hot right now, guys. Really, really hot, this war. And the thing is, is Russia's got an awful lot of nuclear weapons. It says Russia is updating its nuclear doctrine due to Western escalation of Ukraine. Uh, from what I've been reading, that the doctrine is going, they're going to lower the threshold for nuclear weapon use. It says right there, lowering the threshold for nuclear weapon use with their new doctrine. So it is time to sit back and take stock in this. This, uh, this gamble that Russia, that there is no, uh, that there is no red lines or whatever. Well, like I say, I called it a gamble. It's a gamble because you don't know what the enemy's going to do. You just don't know. You might think you know, and the United States has some of the best intelligence out there, but in actuality, there's an old saying that I use a lot on this channel. It's many a slip twixt cup and lip. I guess that's a very old saying. Well, basically what it means is a guy's going to pick up a cup of wine, he's going to drink it, he's, he, he's already tasting it, he can see it coming up to his mouth, and then he spills it all over himself. Or the glass falls out of his hands or whatever. So what he thought was going to happen didn't happen. You know, and that's that's the way, you know. Uh, Taking a look now uh, into the financial markets. You know, we're obscenely close right now to a bunch of terrible things happening. <laughs> that haven't happened yet. Thank goodness. But they're just, and one of the big things is in the financial system itself. Uh, it's like creeping, it's, it's like a creeping eruption or something, a creeping erosion. It's like we're slowly being boiled like the frog. And if you look at it on too close a basis, you don't really see it moving, but it's moving so slow. But it's moving in one direction, and that direction is right now, uh... People are getting laid off and stuff. Businesses are starting to close. Uh, banks are in trouble. They're still in trouble. Uh, you know, I mean, all of this is moving in a direction where it's a slow motion heading toward an economic crash of some sort or another right now. Uh, but it's been moving so slowly that it's almost imperceptible. And especially toward the average person out there. They don't see it. And so if they tell them, that's why they get away with this lie, this big lie that the economy's great, the economy's strong, the economy's good. Yeah, it's good for some people. Some people are just business. It's just booming right now for some people out there. But the majority of people are starting to find it tough, and it's getting a lot tougher. Now taking a look at the, the silver price today. Uh... Taking a look at the dollar, it was 101.65 and going along mostly sideways today. Now, silver today is at 28.52 and it's down 31 cents. Our coin market cap is for our cryptocurrencies. We're looking at Bitcoin at 58,476, Ethereum at 25.22, and XRP at 56 cents. And the stock market today. Looks like the it was the Dow. What's going on today? Load this interactive chart. Uh, okay, at its close, uh, I guess uh, today must be some sort of a holiday or something. Maybe a civic. There's so many holidays on Mondays. It's not even funny. I, I I mean, there's so many. I practically have to ignore them on my show, or I would never get a Monday show done. You guys would miss all my Monday shows. So today's a Monday show, and it looks like it was at close. At its close, uh, the market was at 227 points to the upside, uh, 41,563. Uh, bonds and rates today, and uh, we're looking at uh, 
U.S. 10-year at 3.09. Uh, the, uh, these are all our Friday closings, perhaps. Uh, is there a holiday today? I'm not sure exactly which one it is. There's just so many Monday holidays now. It's just, it's just unreal. But I can't stop my show for every one of them. So if if uh, the markets are closed on a particular day uh, and I do a show on a Monday and the markets are closed, I'm going to give you the uh, the closings. You know, and that way we keep our record going. Uh, of uh, Because in the long term, looking at this out over a number of years, you'd be able to go back on my channel and you'd be able to find out where the markets were or where they closed or whatever. It's not going to matter that much if there was a holiday on a Monday. If you're checking back on my show, like going back two years, and you want to see where a particular market was on a particular day say today is the day you're looking for say you wanted to find out where the markets were on monday the second of september uh september 2024 well there they are <laughs> so u.s 30 years at 4.2 it's up five basis points and the u.s 10 years up 4.2 basis points at 3.09 and listen guys I just know that there's something really big coming pretty soon. It seems like there's a number of issues out there. That all these issues seem like they'd be, they're pointing toward a time in the future not too far off. Maybe, I'm no, no, maybe 20, maybe toward the end of the election cycle or maybe early in 2025 or... It seems like everything, for me... Using an analogy to under, for you guys to understand what I'm talking about. For me, it's like a like a bunch of cars coming in from different angles, and they're heading toward a collision point. So we got kind of one car coming in from the right, one car coming in from the left, one car coming in from the north, one car coming in from the south. All four of these cars are heading toward, and we can see the cars driving, and they're heading toward this intersection where they're all going to collide. That's almost what it's like in my mind. So what are these cars? The cars is like the financial system coming in, roaring in. And on the other side, the war, roaring in. And Disease X coming roaring in from the other side. And they're all coming at this convergent po convergence point. This is slightly in our future. That's what I'm seeing in my mind. And, I mean... Uh, is there some intelligence that's orchestrating this convergence <laughs> for this crash? <laughs> I don't know. But it's going to be one hell of a whopper because there's more than just the financial systems also connected to the real estate markets connected at the hip. And the real estate market, I mean, it's commercial real estate and residential real estate's both getting ready. Commercial's already, I mean, going over the hill. But the residential, and you know how big a market those are? And the Chinese has already rolled over, real estate-wise. We're getting ready to roll over here, I think, now. That's just one thing. We watch these other things start to manifest themselves. I mean, you guys might be in shock in 2025. You might be saying, Glenn, you're right. This has been a total disaster when you look back. So remember what I'm telling you guys right now. Because most people can't see it. There's a convergence happening right now. And I believe that this convergence extends off into even more than just what we can see. Also, what we can't see. is uh, I'm going to call it the convergence. It's like a convergence of, 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 of more than just... It's almost like a convergence of, of, of timelines or something, or a convergence. And, and, and then what's going to happen soon that I see in the future further ahead than that... It's like an, a technological singularity that's also coming. And whether one has, does one have an effect upon the other? I'm not sure. This technological, 
not re a, a, a singularity. It's like we got AI coming in. And how is that going to, and robotics, and you know how many people's jobs could be lost with, with, with robots that are artificially, have artificial intelligence? They can do the, they can do your work, and they can do the work of your neighbor and work of everybody. They don't need us anymore. The robot's better. I mean, he probably got a hundred thousand hour runtime, and he doesn't need to sleep. So say he's a robot dishwasher. I don't know. I'm just making this up. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, he can be in the kitchen. You know, an ordinary dishwasher's in there for two hours, and he's sweating, and his back's tired and everything else. And he says, boss, I got to take a break. I've been in there two hours steady washing dishes. My hands are my hands are getting all wrinkly, and, and even though they're in the gloves or whatever, or sweat, my hands are sweating, and they're... They're like prunes, and I just can't take it anymore. I, my back's hurting me, and I need to take a break. A robot doesn't say that. A robot will work right through the eight-hour shift. Then you charge him up, and he's ready for another eight-hour shift. And maybe he'll run for 100,000 hours before he needs his, uh, a few replacement parts put on him. You know, a technician. Now, there's a job, guys, is to be... A robot repair technician. You know, when I was a bit younger. I forget this all this going to college and all this kind of stuff and going to technical, all this, all this paying big money and everything else. No, take your training and become a robot repair technician. You know, to repair the robots. They're the only. That's the only guy they're going to need in the end. You need all these other people. What are they going to do with all these other people? Put them all, put them all on universal basic income or what? I don't know. Anyway, listen, guys. Thank you for listening to my show. You guys have a great afternoon. Bye bye. <laughs>